Hey, hey, hey. All right, we are finally starting off. I have to restart my phone for some reason. This um, Periscope does not like my uh, my phone. So give me one sec. Let me wipe this. I don't know why it was just clear. So let me wipe it and make it clear before we get started. And hopefully it'll be clearer than what it just was. And let me enlarge it. This would happen when I decide to do a live scope using the computer. But let's see if we can rock through. I'm going to enlarge it and we are going to learn how to write a dispute letter based on the information that we see. Oh, there we go. On um, our credit report. So this was actually at a request from... Um, hi, Demetria, how are you? And hi, T. Nicole, hey, hey, hey. For those of you who don't know, I just came on here just straight talking, right? I'm about to get right into the content, didn't introduce you about me, didn't say hi to you guys. I'll apologize, that is Periscope frustration. <laughs> We're sitting here almost 10 minutes trying to get this thing to work right. I am Nativa, aka the Frugal Credit Nista, your financial empowerment speaker, author, coach. I work with primarily women over 30, teaching them how to master their money, destroy their debts, and soar their credit scores. Thank you so much for inviting your followers. And we scope here on Wednesday nights, typically at 6.30. Hey, Keisha, how are you? Hey, hey, hey. Um, at 6.30 on just that, on credit primarily, budget, and debt as well. And I mainly uh, develop the classes and the topic and things of that sort from suggestions for, from you guys. So if you ever have any suggestions on topics that you'd like to learn about on our Wednesday night class, definitely shoot me an, an email at uh, info at mnhcreditsolutions.com, info at mnhcreditsolutions.com. So I have chosen three examples. Hi, Project Queen, how are you? Uh, for us to go over today based off of questions that I get quite often. If you watched last week's scope, we went over how to identify errors. So this week we're going to take those errors and put them in a dispute letter because that was uh, the topic request <laughs> on this. So let's take this for example. Uh-oh, I just put this on airplane mode. How in the world did I do that? All right, I think it went away. Okay, so this is a collection account. Let me see if I can make this a little smaller. And as you see, it is relatively new as far as the assigned, the uh, open date, 12-2014, so less than two years old. It's uh, original amount of $249. Thanks so much for the, for the hearts. And the deletion date is 2018. The reason why I selected this is because a lot of people say, okay, it's going to be deleted in a couple of years. Should I mess with it? Should I not? What impact is it having on my credit scores? Hi, IODOC2B. So the impact is this. The date open right over here. Let me get my cursor over here. Where is my cursor? Okay, so the date open right here, 12 2004. Google is going to score this based off of the date open date, not the deletion date. That's because FICO scores collections based on when they were assigned or open. So that's December 2004. So even though it's going to be deleted in a couple of years, uh, the fact that it came onto your credit report in 2014 um, lets you know it's still relatively impactful on your credit reports. So how would you go about disputing this? Um, this particular uh, person is actually from Illinois. The statute of limitations on this debt is five years, so it's past the statute of limitations. If you see over in the corner here, the original creditor is AT&T. And so how will we put this into a dispute letter? So for the sake of time, I actually already had some verbiage up. Let me scoot this over here a little bit. So this is Experian. So you always want to start off with, um, it doesn't have to be the full address, but to Experian, but you want to know who you're mailing it to. Um, the date, and then you can put to whom it may concern, hi, Experian, um, dear, whatever you want. The salutation does not matter. What does matter, let me shrink this a little bit, is that you list the account that you are disputing and that you also list why you are disputing it, okay? So this one just says, to whom it may concern, you have a company reporting on my credit report that I have never had an account with, have never heard of, and definitely do not know. You see, that's a typo. It's up to you if you want to keep that. Some people will tell you that typos make a, and I left this on here on purpose, make an, a, a dispute letter feel more authentic and to do um, typos away. <laughs> 
basically leave your typos in there. It doesn't have to be um, it doesn't have to be perfect. And then you want to state your intention. Please remove this from my credit report. So let's dissect this. One of the things that I want you guys to know about disputing is that the uh, burden of proof is always on whoever you are disputing with. So a lot of times you're going to hear, especially from collection agencies, even sometimes Experian and Equifax to say this. If you give us more information, we'll know what you're um, looking for. This is the information that the credit bureaus will need. They will need um, what's going on with it. You have a company reporting. What company? List the company and the account number. Sometimes the account number on Equifax isn't there. At least they know who that company is, okay? They know what they have in your credit file. So list the company. What's going on with the account? Be specific. Um, I have no knowledge of the account. I never heard of it. That's what's going on. This is not my my account so you see how we took an account and we simply did a pretty general report like I don't know them I've never had an account with them um, and I definitely don't owe them so please remove this uh, from my report your intention and you list the account details you tell them you want a full copy of your report you tell them you'll hear from them in about a month and then you sign it with your name um, leaving your address and everything is completely up to you but it's not mandatory Okay, any questions on that? And again, this was a suggested um, subject from someone from our last week's scopes. Again, last week's scope went over how to identify errors. It is saved if you want to go back and take a look at it. Okay, so I'm assuming no questions. <laughs> hey, Luxury Financial. Number two, this one was a fax one, so it didn't come out so clear, but I just wanted to let you know how many errors are on Credit Karma reports. And this is one of the reasons why I typically do not take um, reports from them because it is just filled with so many errors. So if you look that over here, it'll tell you that it's a closed account. Um, it was originally opened May 2006, and that one missed payment, and then over here it has the balance of 1770. Then it says it last reported August 25th, 2016, which I thought was interesting. And then it says that it's a charged off account. It was closed. Um, the open date was May 26 again, 2006. It was closed December 1st, 2009. That tells you right there this is a relatively old account. And they're still reporting it, which means that every month that they report it, it's being calculated into your FICO scores. That's important to know because if you want to... Uh, dispute something you want to know how it's impacting your credit so if you look at that last report date and they've been reporting monthly ongoing that means this is still being factored into your scores no matter how old that close date is okay now if the last report date said like 2010 2011 you're not gonna pay that anymore you're not gonna pay that any mind um, the limit, of course, is wrong. It says $100. How can a limit be $100 when a monthly payment, which we know is wrong, is $1,770? The balance says $1,770. The amount past due says $1,770. The credit utilization says $1,770. This is a lot of freaking stuff that's wrong with this account. And again, this is Credit Karma. So how would this transcribe into a letter? So let's bring it over to a letter. I'm going to go back to this round two note right there. Hi, Experian. I pulled my report from Credit Karma and noticed quite a few errors on this account. You can either list the balance is incorrect, the credit limit is wrong, the credit, uh, I meant to say utilization. So let's just pretend that says utilization. <laughs> utilization is wrong and the payment history is wrong please delete or update in this case i would definitely delete it but i left update just so you know every time you are not going to be looking for an update so when you are looking to write your letter the verbiage is pretty simple you want to state what's wrong what you want them to do you see how specific i was and then you're going to end it with the same verbiage that was up here something similar to this i look forward to hearing from you in a month or so with like a full update updated credit report Okay, 
Now let's go with our last one and then I'm going to go back to my note on the other one. And we're just going to go over some general dispute advice. All right, so this one is the infamous Sally Mae. The date open is from 2009. The balance date on this one, this is actually the one from last week, says 2016. And then on Experian, it says 2011. If you notice, the limit is wrong. 1459 on here, 4791 on here. This is the same loan. This one says as agreed, but it lists all of the negative information here. And this one says late over 120 days past due with the delinquencies. So I'm going to show you what somebody did in one of my workshops and it actually resulted in a deletion off of um, all of her student loans which were reporting quite negatively and keep in mind just because it is gone from your credit report does not mean you do not owe them. <laughs> you will always owe Sally Bay, honey. Okay. This is her letter. I pulled my credit report, so I noticed that the information on my Sally Mae account is reporting quite differently than the other bureaus. I've left you a picture so you can see and that the information, I literally copied and pasted this, so this is exactly how she, she uh, did it. How old should the last report date be for not to be factored into your score? Typically, anything over four years old is not really refactoring into your scores anymore. So if the last report date is like, what is this, 2016, 2012, then it's not really too much factoring into your reports. Um, I was not late on this account, and the balance has not been updated as well. Please remove this outdated and inaccurate information from my reports and send me a full updated credit report with the changes. She literally snapped or snipped or clipped, whatever the word is, the picture, circled it just like this, and she mailed it. Notice, remember, let me go back. You see all this late stuff that was on here? She did not include this in the picture. <laughs> And she literally circled how their information was outdated, the balance, the account status, and that it should say transferred and not all of this account information. And it was deleted. And it was deleted. The reason why I left you this is because sometimes a lot of uh, people go banana saying, I, want, I need a template, I need a template. How'd you get this removed? It must be your letter. No, it's really not the letter. It's the ability to be able to pinpoint errors. So definitely look at last week's scopes, last Wednesday's scopes. If you're looking for tips on how to pinpoint errors, if you're looking for screenshot examples of the errors, then I have a link in my bio on a free five-day challenge that goes over every single section of your credit reports and how what to look out for if you are looking to uh, pin, not only pinpoint inaccuracies, but get information removed that meet my five criteria. That means it's inaccurate, incomplete, inconsistent with what's reporting in the other credit bureaus, uh, unverifiable, and untimely. Okay, or definitely not yours. That's another one that falls into inaccurate. That's questionable, meaning that some of this just doesn't look right. And you kind of go from there. As I mentioned at the beginning of the course, um, it's always best to know that the burden of proof is on whoever you are disputing with. You should not have to send over documents, paperwork, um, billing statements, and all of that good stuff. Can they update the inaccuracy instead of delete it? They absolutely can update it instead of delete it. Um, as long as it's updated with accurate information. They cannot update it and it still be inaccurate. There's a lot of reasons why um, a lot of people have to sue the bureaus because it's updated and it's up, not updated properly. One of the things that we go over in Rock Your FICO, um, which is, of course, actually starts on the 9th. Hopefully most of you guys will join me there if you're looking to soar your credit scores, is how... Um, a, the dispute process works once it gets into the hands of the creditors. If one bureau deletes or two and the other one's done. What? If one bureau deletes or two and the other ones don't, should you dispute again? Advice. That's a great question. So one of the things that you, for that particular question is, each individual bureau is completely different. Each bureau is completely different. If you're in the um, five-day challenge, you also noticed that I went over... Um, Guys, I lost my thought. <laughs> and the five-day challenge, I went over a lot of the five-day challenge. Oh, how addresses factor into the situation. And so the reason being is that information is compared to our personal information first, anything that we dispute. Then it's sent over to the original creditor mm -hmm. uh, electronically. If you're in RICO, 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 RICO we're going to go over eOscar and how eOscar works and um, some of the other electronic 
uh, devices that they use or electronic um, automated systems that they use and how you can kind of bypass those, get by those, and get your dispute in a regular hand. Now, a lot of people state that if one bureau dis- deletes, the other one has to. That's not necessarily true. How EOSCA works is that one bureau will know that another one disputes um, with another bureau, a dispute in an account because it updates them or alerts them, but that doesn't mean that that's going to automatically trigger the same action with the other bureau. That's similar to, let's say, McDonald's, Wendy's, and Burger King are all uh, mandated by the Food and Drug Administration. So if something gets trickled down as far as a law and it affects like McDonald's, that doesn't mean that uh, Burger King and Wendy's is going to automatically update their process and things. Same exact thing. What you want to do, if you want to still continue to dispute it, you want to look at, A, how is it impacting my credit? And B, you want to look at, is it truly legit? A lot of times I've seen that people will just try to get this crispy, clean credit report when the item is not even really affecting their scores. Or it's not that deep. (laughs) Meaning they can build credit around it and still get into the 700, still get into their home, still get into their car, still get um, qualified for a business loan so they can go ahead and get their business up and going. And most times if you are having built up a solid business credit, business um, credit profile, then they are going to look at your personal credit as a guarantee. So you want both of them to be in point as a business owner. It amazes me how many um, business conferences and uh, financial empowerment conferences don't discuss personal credit. It's just, I mean, it goes hand in hand if you're looking to build up a business as well. So hopefully that was a very thorough, but I answered your question. (laughs) But it answers your question. But basically, you look for the burden of proof. That means that you want to put the burden of proof that the accuracy of the account um, lies, meaning that the bureaus and the creditors can be able to prove it. Also, you notice, you probably didn't notice, but a note. A lot of people ask me, what happens if I do a general dispute like this one on a collection company? Um, You know, I never heard of this account. It's not mine. I never heard of an account with them. What happens next? Round two, okay? Round two can apply to both an original creditor as well as a collection agency. With the collection agency, you're going to send a validation letter to the collection agency um, first, asking them to validate the debt, and then no more than three days later, you're going to mail out a letter to the bureau stating that you told me to contact this company. They'll always tell you, we verified. If you have any questions, contact the person, the company that's reporting. So you'll say, you told me to contact this company. I did. For the Fair Debt Collection Practices Act, you are required to delete this account until they are able to fully validate. They have not validated upon my request, nor have they produced any documents proving that they owe the debt. If it's been more than 30 days since the credit repair company sent my dispute letter, how long does it, how long does it take? Well, it depends. Um, how they sent it, number one. And when they sent it, because you have to recall that it's 30 days from when the credit bureaus get the letter, get the dispute. It's not 30 days from when they mail it out. In Empowerment Center, they talk about filing bankruptcy. I mean, it's an option. You know, when I worked in nonprofits, um, we were required to give that as an option. I know a lot of uh, companies will shy away from it, and you hear a whole bunch of financial gurus saying never file. But come on, let's be realistic here. It's there for a reason. It is a tactic. I have filed. I've never been shy about telling you guys that I filed. It was necessary. It would have took me even now. There will be no frugal credit stuff if I had not filed bankruptcy. <laughs> I would not have assets. I would not have money in the bank. I will be still paying people. Okay? I will still be paying people. It is a tactic. It is a strategy on um, a previous scope in here. If you look at pro- some of my previous scopes, I went over exactly and specifically what you should be looking for um, or considering before you take the plunge. If you go to my website, yes, they can, honey. If you go to my website, bit.ly, M-N-H, well, you just go creditsolutions.com, creditsolutions.com. I have three articles, three, including a video on what you should consider prior to taking the plunge. I think it's just the fact that a lot of people use it as a get-out-of-debt-free card when it really is a strategy that should be dealt with as a business decision. To your question, if you dis- if you um, dispute it online, then yes, it's 45 days. If you are disputing from an annual credit report.com credit report, then yes, they can have up to 45 days. If you actually sense additional information, that very rarely happens, but you do give them an additional 15 days to file your dispute. Okay, so you do give them an additional 15 days. We go over the dispute boss section of Rock Your FICO quite a bit. It is $35 to start this week. 
The link is in the caption, bit.ly slash rockyourfico, bit.ly slash rockyourfico. There will be over 125 dispute templates and tactic and strategy after tactic and strategy on everything from bankruptcies, collections, public records, as such as judgments. We really go over judgments quite a bit and different strategies on that. How would you de de approach deleting a paid jump judgment? It's only two months old. I would go to the attorney is one way. That's one of the things I talk about. Rock your FICO, how to go to the attorney and get it deleted. When sending a validation letter, can you provide the collector with the partial account number? Yes, you can. The reason why, um, I mentioned this in the free challenge if you want to take the link. So if you're looking for the free 99 information, get that class that I have. It's over five days and we go over each one. Okay, and you never send your full social security number to probably anyone but the original creditor and maybe the bureaus. Um, we go over each one. The reason why your social security number and the account numbers are redacted is because of the Fair and Accurate Credit Transaction Act. It's for your protection. So legally, they cannot put the full account number. They cannot put your full social security number. So that is legal. Even right here. When I got these X's, I did that for a reason because that's exactly how it's going to be on your credit report. It's going to be at the beginning on the end and the rest will be X's. Hi, hi, Candy. The rest will be X's. So that's how it's going to be on your credit report too. Um, so again, if you're looking for just information on how to read your credit report, then take the free challenge. The link is in my uh, bio. It's uh, bit.ly slash understand my credit, capital U, capital M, capital C, mm -hmm. bit.ly slash understand my credit. The link is in my bio. Take the free challenge. If you know that you need to get this credit right and you're not exactly sure how to read the accounts that's appearing on your credit report or if it's affecting you or if it's not or what should be your first or initial dispute, I'll go over all of that in the free challenge. <laughs> If you are looking for specific strategies on how to get things removed, how to get empowered through education on some of your consumer right laws, on how to use those consumer right laws in order to get uh, deletions or updates, then that's definitely a course. Hi, Bailey girl, how are you? Then that is a course. That is Rock Your FICO, and as I mentioned, you can get that for $35 to start this week only. So, what's my time? My baby is um, getting, we got an A on his test, so we promised him a toy. <laughs> and he has literally been harassing me all day, all day, all day. If you are in my Facebook group, we are going to go over round two of this, um, of this section. So, we've already gone over... Um, the challenge, which I just mentioned to you guys, understand my credit, bit.ly slash understand my credit in the bureaus. What bureaus sent back dispute updated, but info is the same. What next? What's wrong with the account and what was updated? One of the things that you want to look at, I'll give you a tip to see if something is updated, is to look at the last activity date. If anything has been updated, the last activity date should have the current date that they claim they updated. A lot of times they'll tell you they updated some information and nothing was updated but the last activity date and it was updated with the exact same information. If that's the case, you have to look at what we just talked about. What did you tell them specifically was wrong with the account? If you just said, you know, please validate or can you verify and validate all the information that was on there and all that, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, then you haven't really given them specifically anything to do. So they simply looked at all the information, compared it to your personal information, as I talked about in the free challenge, and they verified it. And they claimed they updated when nothing was updated but the last activity date. What you could do then is send a letter saying you said you updated information. You can send them a copy of the old report, the one that they sent you, and say the only thing that's been updated is this last activity date. And circle it and highlight it in red and yellow. And basically say, I'm dispute, I'm confused. What was updated? Because the response that should have came to you was remains the same. That's a that's an option that the bureaus have. Remains. Basically, nothing changed is, is here. <laughs> However, if they actually updated and they sent you a response that says updated, that something should have been updated other than the last activity date. Either the payment history was updated, um, one of the accounts within the payment history, basically something had to been updated. So that's that would be your next move. You could do round number two that I have here and go with disputing directly to the collection agency or the original creditor. You can do that and then kind of dispute both of them at the same time. So that's an option for you. I go over that quite a bit and rock your FICO. Um, and it's in my book too if it's a collection account. So, Alrighty guys, I've been hanging out with you for about 23 minutes I believe. So a little bit under. I do got to get my baby his toy before it's bedtime for him. 
If you guys have any questions, like I said, we'll be doing round two more than likely on Saturday at 11 o'clock. Saturday, 11 o'clock Central and Credit Makes Sense group on Facebook, which is free, by the way. <laughs> Don't charge from a Facebook group, not for the main Facebook group. So, and we'll be going over how to respond, how to formulate your response. So basically it comes back verified. What do I do next? This is one of the tactics right here. Um, if you know you need to really slay your credit report, your credit, and you um, are not or don't are not in a position to pay someone like a professional like me, anywhere between 100 to maybe even 150 plus per month, then you definitely want to get the course. As I mentioned before, you can start for $35 to start this week and that's um, again if you need the information to repair, restore, rebuild and transform your credit scores. I will see you guys and credit makes sense for those that I noticed that are on here on Saturday at 11 o'clock. Um, again the free challenge is in my bio. Hope you guys have a great weekend. We'll be rocking it out here on Friday, Friday, Friday at noon for Q&A Friday. Uh, noon Central Standard Time. So Friday at noon Central Standard Time for Q&A Friday. You guys enjoy your, what is today? Wednesday. <laughs> you guys enjoy your Wednesday and I will see you here on Friday. And for those in Credit Makes Sense, I will see you on Saturday at 11 o'clock Central. Have a great evening, guys.